What's going on guys? We are here now for the second gigantic melee. Inhale the Gorilla King, your Pathfinder first edition send-off tournament. We had one no-show. We had one last minute cancel, so your boy is gonna play a monster in here. I forgot to do this okay. at the beginning of last week, so I'm gonna do it now to Alice, Tiki, and uh, Nick, and also oh, Jace. Thank you guys so much for your patronage. I didn't say it at the beginning like I usually do, but truly, we couldn't function as a YouTube channel without you guys, and the same goes to Adam. The same goes to, do you have any other patrons in the room? Josh, Adam, Josh, you guys are the most amazing 10 out of 10. Now, it's time to kill each other. So to bring everybody up to speed really quickly, because we're not just here. To, well, we're kind of just here to kill each other. But there's a story involved in the killing. After long years reigning in the Mwangi Expanse, the Gorilla King Ruthizek has died. This has left a void amongst his subjects in Usaro and beyond. And the intelligent apes that served Ruthizek, known as the Charaka, have splintered into warring factions that tear each other apart, in the hopes that their demon lord, patron Angizan, will decide that they are worthy to be killed and reincarnated as the next Gorilla King. In an unexpected move, Angizan has issued a proclamation across the Material Plane. A tournament is to be held in Usaro. The winner will receive the honor of being killed and reincarnated as the next Gorilla King. The losers will see themselves reincarnated as Charuka, bound in servitude to the Gorilla King and Angazan through him. You have survived the long trek across the endless jungle, fighting off both hungry natives and your fellow competitors. Perhaps you feel Angazan calling to you in a spiritual sense, and you are eager to serve your lord. Perhaps you seek to bring justice to the Charuka and enter to see to it that no Gorilla King will ever reign in Usaro again. Either way, bloodshed awaits you. You guys, as soon as you arrive, you're given the gear that you carry by humanoid slaves that work for the Charaka. You are, after that, thrown into cages that function as little teeny tiny demiplanes. And you've stayed there for mm, a week-ish, give or take. It's hard to tell. The passage of time is wibbly-wobbly when... You're just surrounded by darkness and a little tiny peephole that allows you to see the arena. Several sacrifices are performed, several humanoids are dragged out into the sand, their throats slit, then forcibly reincarnated as intelligent apes that proceed to devour their own bodies and return to the stands, beating their chests and guns stolen from Alkenstar. PSA, don't beat your black powder rifles against stands and things, they'll, they'll be bad, but they don't know. And you guys do see the events of the last eight before you. You do see a Oread turn into an octopus underground and tear people apart. You see a somehow a very gigantic, very loud ogre is the stealthiest man in the room as a half-elf archer basically just picks everybody off. So top of the initiative is the first person let out of their cage. I'm going to, as I, as I suspect some of you know, I'm going to grab your token randomly, and I'm going to spin it around on the board, and then from there, uh, that will determine where you end up on the board. You'll have the regular, like, your action economy as you know it, essentially, once you hit the board to hold actions and or do stuff. First up is Hankoon. If you could describe your character, introduce yourself. You have the floor, my friend. I'm a Kazatha gunslinger, and I come from the deserts of Azirion, and I've been raised by half-elves, uh, who trained me to use guns, and I've lived off as a mercenary ever since. I've traveled south to, to the land of the tournament, and now I'm ready to kill everyone for sport. Fair enough. All right, my man, you are dropped in the arena. You see, like, you emerge from the darkness, and there's several Charuka just, again, beating spears against shields, beating firearms against shields. It's a wonder they haven't all shot themselves in the head, especially for one such as yourself who understands a little better how those guns work. You are the first in the arena. I'm just going to run in one direction. Right. Uh, the squares are 
1.5 feet, right? The squares are five feet. Five feet, sorry. Yeah. I'm messing up with the metric system. So I'm just gonna run over here Alrighty. and wait for other people to pop out. Alrighty, fair enough. So then next is... Well, he's a guy that we hang out with a lot here at Black Dragon Gaming. He has a channel that is known far and wide as the Inn of Planar Crossroads. And guys, truly, we can't be friends unless you go subscribe to those guys because Black Dragon Gaming could not exist without their help. Zort, the Trox, enters the battlefield right there. He's a little bigger than we're saying he is. Adam? Oh, he says as he comes out. Uh, being used to the, the gladiatorial arena, when he's burst uh, forth out of whatever cage, wherever he falls, he immediately kind of gets the idea of what it is, throws his arms up in the air, and looks at the crowd, just roars. And it's a very green uh, trox, red eyes, and that's about all that's kind of really noticeable about him, considering that troxes aren't all that common up on the surface anyway. First opponent that's there, is the Kasatha. This is an arena, and Zort knows how to fight an arena, so he's gonna go up to the Trots. I mean, uh, to the Kasatha. Alrighty. Five, five, 10, 15, 20. And he'll say, uh, give Zort hug. And that's what, and Zort's gonna reach out to grab him. Alrighty. So a 50 to beat your CMD. Yeah. Okay. And I so have effectively grappled. grappled. And because of raging, uh, oh, I did not say I was raging, so I can't say that. So I grapple you, uh, and I will enter a rage after I grapple you, I guess. Alrighty. Yes. Next, we, uh, we do a thing in Pathfinder that is sometimes known as size disparity. I am not looking at the board. No one can be upset if I drop this directly on top of the Trox, though it would be really funny. Next enters a little tiny Sphivneblin. Mahogany, if you would introduce yourself, introduce your character, you have the floor. Also, this does enter an adjacent square. Okay, I am Queblin Gemin the Sphivneblin. Unlike my own voice, he is mildly terrified of what he is seeing, but he is following his mistress's orders. A slave of the drow from the Darklands. He had been a bodyguard for a number of years because he doesn't have the willpower to make decisions for himself, and that seemed easier. Hashtag okay. three charisma. I don't think that's a huge yeah. spoiler, because I don't think anyone in this group has charisma poison, so we're good. Yeah. Um, he is actually wearing... Uh, studded leather holding a buckler. Other hand free. Let's see, and this is uh, a threatened square, correct? Yeah, it is. Okay, well, I will start my turn uh, with a five foot shuffle this direction because big scary man is right there and I do not like that. I will move action, gather power, so a little sandstorm will start brewing around me, which I will use my standard action, a sandstorm wall blast. Uh, everything I'm drawing is effectively a mini sandstorm. It will do half of, well, on initial placement, it'll do a quarter of the damage of my blast, but it'll provide cover and deal damage for six rounds. And I get 120 feet of it. Oh. So 24 squares. Fair enough. Um, how do I... Okay. I suppose that works. <laughs> okay, this is one, one of my two, favorite classes. Six, seven, eight, awesome. nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, oh. 21, 22, 23, 24. Alrighty. A sandstorm um, kicks up. Yep, and until someone walks into it, I have no rolls to do with that. Uh, because of the way I'm set up, I mitigate all burn, and that's it. In that case, next up is... I will not say the man with the most boring name in the house, because that's not necessarily accurate. So instead, I'll just say Space Cowboy Part 2. I'm not looking at the board. I'm not looking at the board. You end up over there. 
you do land in the sandstorm, Josh, as you, if you would introduce okay. your character. This is exactly well, how Tiki died, basically. I'm sorry. I promise I wasn't looking. Well, right now, what you see here is Sean. He's a simple gunslinger. Uh, came here for some fame and glory. He's in it. Yeah, so, he lands right uh, in. Sandstorm time. Now, when I'm about to roll, it's actually half this much damage. Sean does take 31 damage as he falls into a sandstorm and is buffered around as he contacts the ground. Going to five foot step, looking at the thing creating the sandstorm, I'm gonna shoot it. Say 25 against touch AC. Uh, my touch AC would normally have been 25. Jesus so Christ. So I'm at 29 <laughs> right now. Second shot out of the second revolver. I, yeah. th this is what happens when I try to make characters that have big bonuses. They don't roll above a 10. The RNG sees to it that everyone is balanced. Oh. Uh, third shot. Oh. That is a misfire. I believe Ouch. I can use a grip point to stop the misfire. Okay. You're very lucky this isn't a BDG home game, otherwise you'd have like the bullet would have gone through the sandstorm, ridden around and shot you back in the head. But we're rules is written today, so good. That'll be my next turn, because that's a move action to do that. Okay. But so, I'm out of the revolver. Alright, oh yeah, you are two weapon fighting with revolvers, aren't you? That looks okay. a little better. That hits. Uh, yep. so roll to confirm. Oh! Confirms. 31 does confirm, yeah. Okay. I look away for five seconds to make sure I understand how this sandstorm works. And then I look back, and there's a natural 20. And then the final uh, shot for this one. Alrighty. And it's a 15, so. So I see one hit and one critical. Alright. So. Does your ability count as a spell like ability? The sandstorm? Yes. Yes, so you take an extra 2d6 from our Skullbane bu bullets for each hit. Woo! Spicy. But I only got hit once, right? You got hit you twice. Got hit twice. 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 Oh, and one was a crit. One's a times four critical. I think it's a times four for your weapon. Yeah, I think it's yeah. times four. Yeah. All right, and I do have DR6 slash adamantine. You kids and your geokineticists. They're so good. Okay. I played them. They do seem really good, yeah. So 15 times four... 60 damage. 60. And then the extra 2d6. So 65 plus 18, was it? Yeah. How much again? 65 from the critical, and then 18 from the not critical before your DR. Alrighty. Then it goes to... Again, we had a last minute drop in today a no-show, so I will be playing a monster. You guys see right up here, this door here opens. I know some of you can't see it, but you will. And out from the door emerges what has to be certainly the largest ape you've ever seen in your life. I have to stretch his token. I forget how much space he takes. He takes that much space up. He, you notice that at, like at Zort's head, it appears to be contacting a barrier. He might even have to like squat a little about at the ten foot mark, so as not to like push through it. But this thing does just straight like crash through the barrier almost where there's like a big like upward push where he exists i'm assuming no one here speaks polyglot but you begin to hear unless i'm wrong and someone corrects me you hear the crowd just start chanting the same like five or six words over and over as this monster enters the arena and looks at I'm gonna be really nice for you guys, and I'm gonna put a start range on the board <laughs> so you can metagame, and so I don't have to count squares. Well, you guys can't see that, so we're fine. All right, so we're going to full attack, I think, the gunslinger. That, that's that's a little vague. Sean, we're going to full attack Sean. He turns Sean's direction and brings his arms up to slam them down upon you. So I have a 41 and a 28 to hit. Those will both hit. Alrighty, so you take 38 damage plus an additional 16 points of damage as his arms collide with you and then he brings them back up and these wicked fiendish claws rend the flesh from your body. Then he leans in for the bite. He's actually, he's gonna try to bite Zort. He sees puny little Zort. And he leans in for Not a that 
39 to hit Zort, 22 damage if it connects. It does connect. Alrighty. Actually, I'm realizing I did skip someone, so I'm going to... I'm terrible. The initiative is going to reset. It actually is Lilyansha's turn. Donald, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. I saw the name. I just put a V in, so I'm just going to yeah, do I, this. I was, uh, I, I was thinking you missed me or something happened. Sometimes I'm terrible. Forgive me. I'm not looking at the board. I'm not looking at the board. You might land in someone's third range. But I put you in the stands. That doesn't work. So you end up oh. there. All right, Donald. Okay. No, you are not there. You are over here. <laughs> you can't land in the stands. Okay. So as I fall fall down, uh, if if any of the characters would know what a Zon Kuzan uh, priestess look look like, you see a a drow. Uh, wearing the finest, uh, uh, finest uh, spider silk uh, priest's, priestess garments uh, land, landed down. Pretty, pretty attractive for a female drow noble priestess. A so, hot drow noble priestess in BDSM gear. Got yes, it. yes. <laughs> because because Zorn Kuzan is a sadist, pretty much. Accurate. So, as I fall down, I'm going to use my immediate action for the fall, and then standard action, I'm going to get my wings from my uh, from my bloodline. How high is the is ceiling? You see that Zort, Zort's probably, I hadn't looked at his sheep for this, but I imagine he's probably like 12 to 14 feet tall, and he has to squat a little yeah. to not rub his head on this barrier. Whereas the giant ape on the other side seems to be able to just, like, he doesn't break through it, but it does bend in response to him. It almost feels like the crowd really wants him to win, and he can cheat the GM magic. Okay, you, so You get I... the feeling that it's either, the ceiling is either at 10 feet or in one of the colossal ape's squares. So I fly to the top of the roof to have a bit of a height, height, a height advantage. Alrighty, 10 feet it is. And, and that, is, that is all my actions, if I we call correctly. Alrighty. So he's gonna go later in the initiative, or earlier in the initiative on the, the next rounds, because I'm terrible. But we're gonna grab the bottom of the order here. Shake him around here. La 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 la. Not looking at the board. 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 And in drops this guy. Parseth, if you can introduce yourself, introduce your character. The actions are yours. Awesome. Uh, in drops a man in very spiky armor. Uh, with a big old sword in hand. Uh, he is Archelaus, the glorious uh, Aslanti human, uh, was in stasis for millennia, came out, found his faith, and pretty much just been fighting his way across Galerion ever since. Found out about this uh, tournament and signed up as fast as he could because great glorious battle is to be had I'm going to be activating my boots of speed which grants haste so my base speed increases by 30 because of uh, some feats and everything uh, I'm not weighed down by my full plate armor uh, so I'm going to make a mad dash this guy right there. So. Alrighty. Inexplicable luck once per day, free action. Uh, I gain a uh, plus A to any single D20 roll. So, this very first attack is going to have a plus A to the first attack. So, let's see if this hits. Alrighty. So, does 33 hit your AC? I have to hang on. That is a critical threat for a keen greatsword. I had to go back and like highlight it. You did roll a 17. All right, so then I'm gonna roll again uh, and it's gonna be a plus four to confirm my critical hit. Alrighty. Assuming the 33 hits. So Josh, does a 24 confirm, or a 28, excuse me, does that confirm on you? It hits, but it confirms. Alrighty. So 26 points of damage. If that is all, we will slide on over. Back up to Han Kuhn, if you're done. Arcalus. Yeah, I think I am. I just had to text so. All right. All righty, Arcalus. You are, or rather, Han Kuhn, you are grappled. This big, ugly bug-type thing has emerged from a cage and has promptly decided to give you a hug, and he seems to be doing so. What do you do? Going to 
grow some tentacles out of my head because that's how my prehensile hair works. That's so how I we decided to flavor it. Enough. Okay, fair enough. I was exactly. wondering how we were gonna, like, if the hair was gonna come out of like your chest or something. Uh, so I use them to grab a paper cartridge and load it, uh, load the pistol I'm holding in my main hand, and I'm going to make a single attack targeting his legs using a D that costs one grit. Okay. One grit point. Uh, so if it hits, it, uh, he's not prone. But since I'm grappled, I have a minus four to dexterity and a minus four to a minus two to equals. So it's uh, it's actually a twenty-two. Yeah. If you're still shooting at touch. Then yeah. Yes. Uh, so now you're not prone. Wouldn't that mean we're both not prone then? Because I'm technically still grappling you. Yeah, I believe so. And that's the end of my round. Alrighty, and I do believe it does move to Zort. Zort, roll to maintain that grapple. So, I can use my raging grapple to maintain it, which is a 49, which beats his CMD. Yes. And, uh, you see, to stand up, I have to, I take an attack of opportunity from Doodle Bob here. Doodle Bob would swing on you, yes. So... I was just going to let him go and point at the big guy and say, and kind of be like, that first, then we fight. But now that I'm prone, things have changed. Um, so I'm going to, I guess, flurry of blows using my, using each of the blows as a grapple instead to do my unarmed attack damage. So I'm going to roll three raging grapples. Saying Zort Squash. 51, 44, and 49 will all beat his. Well, I believe that's actually a natural one, so the last one does fail. So just the damage is 14 on the first one, 18 on the one after that. If that's all from Adam, I mean Zort. Now uh, it yes. actually goes to, to Donald's turn. I feel really bad. Okay, my turn. I'm going to be using Bone Shatter on our friendly Gunslinger here. And, and you I like that spell have... a lot. That spell is all over Lord of the it, it, it is a uh, it is a very it, it's a very useful necromancy spell. I need Fair him enough. to make a make make a fortitude save. Alrighty, he Josh. Is not like the giant gorilla behind me. Well, I'm kind of with the you, gunslinger on this one. Well, <laughs> you 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 are between a rock and a rock, a rock, a hard place, a giant gorilla, and a BDSM uh, a zonk kazan priestess. You're not having a good day. All right, Josh, make that fourth save. Come on, real good for once. Uh... Okay, you're. This is going to be quite quite nice. Nice for me, not nice for you. Burn. So you take 45 damage, and you are you, you have the exhausted effect for for a minute. I'm going to, to fly and praise Zonku Zon for bringing pain to the arena. Is that a specific move action? Like you, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, flying, uh, flying. Yes. Uh, gotcha. Move action. Alrighty, if that's all. Hey, uh, really glad I'm not dead yet, because it seemed like I might have gotten there. So, well, you know, get spooky. So for my standard action, I am going to wait. Am I? I'm in melee range of that gorilla, right? You are. Just for our benefit, Tommy. Mechanically, how big is the gorilla? Colossal. Well, shift in plan. I will uh, use my Earth Glide to five foot shuffle straight down. <laughs> Alrighty, I really like the flavor of a five-foot shuffle as you just kind of, like, move your feet into the sand and down you go. Like, I wiggle, and the earth just keeps moving because the rocks <laughs> like me. He, do, he literally does the shuffle to get down. Dun, 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 dun. Well, that's the hustle, sir. The hustle. That Not in like this universe. <laughs> uh, I will then move action, gain Tremor Sense 30 feet. Understood, if that is all... Oh yeah, that's all. Josh! <laughs> Look at the armor guy, but... You can stab me later. Let's just take out the gorilla first, please. And then he'll take a five-foot step this way. I'm gonna take a potion. Alright, that will provoke an attack of opportunity from the gorilla. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. So I, 
I have a 27 to hit you. Your dex has been reduced by 6. And 21 yeah. damage if it connects. 21. Ooh, 8 hit points left. Here we go, sports fans. Alrighty, here we go. What kind of potion is this? Cure moderate runes, because I was running out of money. Fair enough. Alrighty, here's hoping you don't roll two ones. May the RNG gods be kind to you. You got this. Oh, that wasn't bad. Passes to big boy. He is going to attack. Who's he gonna attack? He's gonna kill Josh. No, he's not gonna kill Josh. I'll be generous about it. I'm gonna attack people that I haven't attacked yet. I'm gonna have both of my slams target Archelaus. One and two. So I have a 40 to hit you and then a abysmal 24. Uh, the second attack does not hit. Alrighty, 21 damage is assigned. The bite will go at... Mm, who will the bite go at? The bite will go at Han Kuhn, who is garpled and prone. And it's 28 to hit for 28 damage of Beckon X. Yeah, it does. Anyway, that's my turn. He full attacks and then raises his bloody mouth and clawed gorilla hands beating his chest to the crowd. The crowd loves it. Archelaus. Targeting the big boy. Alrighty. We're gonna try using Searing Light. Here's yeah. the attack of opportunity is a 36 to hit for 26 damage if it connects. That is going to hit. And then you need to make a concentration check DC 36 or lose the spell. Ah, so close. Oof. Oh, that's so close. Oof, but you do miss. The spell does fizzle. You are unable to maintain your connection. I would like to give him an action point. Oh, wait. You I don't, can't. This isn't Lordly Caliber, Adam. You can't. <laughs> Alrighty. All right, then. That's pretty much it. Alrighty. In that case, we go top of the order to Han Kuhn. So I'm assuming a 19 does not break Zort's CMD. Oh, no. No. That's it, I guess. Alrighty. Zort, what you got? Zort is first going to click his heels together. Look at the guy that's on the ground with him, ease up his arms and point at the big thing, point at, point at the guy he's holding, point at the big thing, and he's going to let him go. Okay. And he's going to spend his, uh, let me see, got to spend my move action to get up, I think. You do. Which is fine, I, I believe. And it will provoke from big boy. Uh, 25 to hit you. I do. It's my prone AC it gets. Okay, but he does contact the you as you get up for 20 damage. Now that I'm up, I'm going to look at him, and I'm going to, as a swift action, choose to exploit weakness, which means I make a check to see if I can pick out a spot on him that is particularly fleshy and good to hit, and I should have made it. Let me make sure, I will you did, tell you. You did connect, yeah. Against this CR, you passed. You passed by a mile. Good deal. So, I do that. I can now exploit his weakness as it shows on there, and I am going to Raging Flurry of Blows instead. Alrighty. Bunch of numbers. Uh, Bunch of 25 numbers. for the first one. That does connect. All right, that one's going to do 21 damage. The second one is going to be a 23. Okay, that I does hit. 23, you got damage him. On it. it was 12. And then a 30 to hit. So I'm seeing a 12, a 15, and a 15 for your damage rolls at the bottom. The 2, 6, plus 9, plus 1, and he does take all of that. All right, well, it's easier to hit than I thought. And yeah. Zort just looks down at the guy who's still prone and says, Well done. Does anyone at the table speak Terran? No. Okay. Uh, I don't. Oh. No speaking that. No, All I right. Don't. In that case, no one understands Zort except for the Trox who didn't make it today. Yeah. But he's pointing so at the big guy, and he's pointing down, and he's saying, "Kill a bit." It's not hard to understand what he's trying to get across. Eh, that's probably accurate. Yeah, As you like punch his ankle a whole bunch, and it hurts him. That does bypass his DR, correct? First, what we just yeah, you because know, I studied him. Yeah, understood. If that is all, Donald, it's Vilyasha's okay. turn. I think I said I that right. I am going to going to cast uh, Fireball at this corner, so Ziegler doesn't have to make a will save, and I order everyone politely to focus fire on the uh, gorillas, talking in common. 
Alrighty. Uh, does Egrita have a uh, have a uh, SR? He does. Okay. So let's see if I actually beat this SR. Twenty-four. That is exactly what you needed. Normally, it would be tied to defender, but playing rules written, so you do just beat his spell resistance. Okay. Here comes so. Very quick save. Is fifteen. Uh, that's a fail fa failure. There, so he takes uh, thirty-nine fire fire damage. Okay. And I am going to be looking quite impressive in the pack flying. Uh, casting casting spells, turnovers. So. Being super awesome, flying around. Look yes, at me yes. Go. Yes, I, I mean she she at least put up a diva. Had these all cues on pieces of pain and misery. Alrighty, so you see that some of the fire, like as it connects with Big Ugly Boy, it seems to just kind of wash off him and not really phase him at all. But a lot of it does get through, and now it's Quiblin's turn. Quiblin definitely, like, rules is written. There's nothing saying that a colossal creature overrides your tremor sense. You definitely feel everyone within 30 feet of you. But one of them, you feel a lot harder than everybody else. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, I can feel, like, his contact points. Mm hmm And, okay, so my tremor sense specifically lets me ignore uh, bonuses to cover. Nice. So, like, I can, I can kind of toff this. <laughs> Josh, if you're watching, I hope you're proud. Not Josh that's here, Josh the other patron, Josh, who played Toph and wrecked a party with her once. Nice. Now that does, okay. it gets around concealment too, right? Because you don't have line of sight to him, yeah. tremor sense. Okay. I'm going to move action, gather power, which is really weird underground. But <laughs> you guys hear a faint muffled <laughs> from somewhere down beneath you. <laughs> yeah, you uh, it actually makes a huge sound. Getting more earth. <laughs> Yeah, well, but, like, all of those purple squares have, uh, dust tornadoes for, like, another three rounds. And now there's a little dust tornado above my square where I'm not. <laughs> I just kind of throw my hand out, and a sandstorm flies out of the ground and attempts to entangle Gorilla Boy. Alrighty, so this is a spell-like ability. As such, it is subject to spell resistance, if you could roll it. Ah! This is a physical blast. No. It is not fine to spell resistance. Okay, good. So that is plus 17 on that. Yeah, that hits. So you got 34. it. You definitely connect with him. 67. Oh my. And if I could get a reflex save out of him. Oh, you can. Because this is entangling. Alrighty, here we go. Good news. That's almost my best save. It's an 18. Great try. <laughs> Commendable, but no. Uh, he is entangled. Alrighty. And I am good. And you are good. Alrighty. Sean. I almost said Shane, but I remembered it's the kid from Fallout 4. That's what saved us. It's gonna us. be... And my turn's gonna be great. I'ma just five foot step this way, turn off my boots of haste, and then wait eight more rounds for my exhaust to kick off unless somebody kills me. <laughs> just gonna sit there and... <sighs> And it does go to the, mechanically, this is an awakened, half-fiend, giant, advanced Mega Primatus from Bestiary 6. What does he want to do? He is not, he's got you sand. You keep talking and all I keep hearing is, blah, 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 G-M-B-S, blah, 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 blah. And this is blah, why blah. my single encounters take longer than a round, Adam Spain. Nah. Hey, I'm on an adventure path, No man. shade, no shade, Lucretio uh, sucks, no shade. <laughs> Should have named that episode, Zanesha was better. I digress. This provokes from Zort. I don't have greater grapple. I'm going to try to reach out and grab the Trox. So, you're trying to grapple me, but I get to hit you. Big hand reaches down. Zort's going to try to wail on your hand with both of his big massive arms. Alrighty. 24. That does connect. 17 is added to the DC. So I take a minus essentially a minus 18 on this roll because I take a neg 2 to attack rolls. So 39 minus 18 I imagine does yeah, not right. get where it needs to go. Alright, so then he's gonna... Even before my bonus is the my CMD is 40. Fair enough. Alright, so congratulations on the, the colossal guy not being able to grapple your grapple build. I'm gonna fight So he reaches down so he kind of reaches down and he goes 
It's like, ah! He says something really loud and angry and polyglot. And then it passes as he steps a little bit farther back away from the scary bug guy. Archelaus! I'm gonna do a five foot step back. Okay. Then I'm going to expend one use of my fervor. I'm gonna heal 46. Oh, I just healed 13 points. Understood. And pretty much I'm gonna be eyeballing uh, the big bad ape over there and get ready for my next round. Fair enough. I have, I have plans. He has plans. Hankoon, you're free. I'm still prone, so I'm gonna get up first. Okay. It will provoke uh, from exactly. my boy. He takes an egg too. He's not so good, but we're trying. So 29 to hit you, to hit your prone. Uh, yeah, that hits. So 19 damage. Uh, next, I'm gonna load my all of my guns with my magic hair, or rather, magic head tentacles. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna load all four weapons, and then I'm going to attack. Unless you have some means of mitigating this, it does provoke. My normal AC counts, right? Now. Yeah, yeah, you're back to full AC, and I do... Roll a critical and have a 35 to confirm. Okay, the, it doesn't confirm. Okay. So then it just does 22 points of damage. That the 25 definitely hits me. My touch armor class is a lot of things. Good is not one of them. Colossal frogs. I take 16 points of bludgeoning and piercing damage. You just barely dodge out of the way of this giant fist just outright squishing you into the ground and then fire back into him. I assume these guns are enchanted in some way? Uh, not in any other way than damage. Okay, fair enough. So it's just like a like an enhancement bonus? Yeah. Alright, so it does break his DR. I had to check. I assumed everyone would come in here with a magic weapon of some kind, probably. But you never know. Yeah. Anywho, if that's all... Uh, I'll take a five-foot step here. Right. So you did use a move action to stand up, and you can only five-foot step if it's your yeah. only move action in the round. So... Yeah. So you can't. So you can be there. Right. So it does pass now to... Liancha. Okay, I'm going to do Bone Chatter on the... Uh, on the ape. So, I need to beat its SR. Yes, you do. 17, 17 and... It. So, I'm going to move up a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit more and turn it over. Alrighty. Queblin. Fun fact, uh, my sandstorm does the same type of damage as bullets. <laughs> Neat. Bludgeoning and piercing. Bullets flying all around the middle of the arena. <laughs> uh, which has another two rounds on it. So it didn't take any time to try to remove the weird clingy sand from its feet, right? It did not. Okay. Well, I'm going to shoot a second bout of clingy sand at it. Literally the same roll for the same <laughs> shit. I know. <laughs> oh, right. I have another plus two because of elemental overflow, but whatever. Doesn't matter. You kids and your um, geneticists. Yeah, it's... I... I'm really glad I took the time to learn them. Anyway. So there's that. 60 points of damage is very real. It needs to make another reflex save. Yeah, no, I rolled worse yeah, no. than it last time. Uh, so now it actually can't move anymore. Okay. It The sand has somehow compacted to the ground beneath him. Nice. So he's just like knee deep in sand. Yeah. Is that all? Yep, I'm good. Alrighty, Sean. Not Shane. I'm gonna keep crawling away. <laughs> and keep waiting to be not exhausted no more, so I can do my stuff. Hey man, I gotta say, in the last game, there were people who were down for 17 rounds or like 100. <laughs> so 10 rounds ain't bad. 10 rounds you can feasibly get out of. In any case, it's my turn. I have sand on my feet. I don't like that. It's a strength check to break out, is that correct? Yes. Alrighty, here we go. It's 24. Yeah. That, that gets you. Alrighty, so he just kind of like flexes his quads, essentially, or his calves rather, and just poof, sand everywhere. 
As a standard action. As a standard action. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, I'll five foot step right that way. Yeah, I'll five foot step that way and then pass. The gorilla just kind of like, again, he flexes his calf muscles. The sand explodes and he kind of just like moves in such a way that everyone is in reach of his massive arms. Parseth, what do you got? I am going to expend one more use of my fervor. Okay. To quick cast grace. Seems really good right now. All right, so yeah, I'm not going to provoke any attack of opportunity from my movement, and I'm going to just run straight up on him. 27, 27 versus AC. Does connect. 13 slashing damage resolves. Again, I assume it's some kind of magical. Yeah. Alrighty. He's not looking happy. He's pretty beat up. There's a sizable, like, bruise on his right hand where Zort had just pounded into it. That's starting to, like, like, it looks like there's some bones broken there. His feet are pretty messed up. Your great sword probably gets into his knee for how big he is and just slices into him. He's starting to pant pretty hard. And if that is all... Hankoon. So I'm going to take five foot, five foot step, and then I'm going to full attack this guy. Alrighty. Uh, using uh, using deadly aim. Okay. So, and, and both deadly aim and uh, give it rapid shot. So I get an extra attack at full at full bonus. Alright, so how many total but, attacks will be coming at him? Six. Because it will provoke several times. My dex is back to full because I'm not entangled anymore. My dexterity okay. score is 21. So I will, each one of those attacks will provoke an attack of opportunity. Okay. So I'll let you go ahead and roll first. Okay, a 28 and a 30. Ooh. Wow, that is a critical hit. Well, his touch armor class is four. You definitely hit four. I'm not even, he has less than 100 hit points left he died to the critical the first attack the 20 the minimum damage just kind of grazes into him and then it's the like as he leans back you're able to shoot him like directly through the temple and this guy does just fall like very dead he skips dying by a whole lot as he just kind of like leans back and collides with almost the arena itself, almost falling into the crowd that does all scatter real hard, but there's a barrier that does catch him and he kind of slides down. He will get the two attacks of opportunity in though. So neither I have hits. Neither hits? Alrighty. So, I won't uh, shoehorn this like I did for the other group. As the gorilla dies, everyone, no save, is paralyzed. A hole opens in the top of the arena and down come a couple of Charaka armed with spears, and one of them dressed more like a shaman. There's no need to forcibly reincarnate this guy as a Charaka. He was kind of just playing for the ultimate honor of becoming the next Gorilla King. He already is a very loyal servant of Angazan. So he simply just rezzed. Crowd still very much enjoyed his performance, and he seems pretty proud of himself for getting this far. However, fortunately for Tommy, I don't have to play a monster moving forward. Inhale the Gorilla King, if that is all, Hankoon. Zort, what's up? Zort's going to look at the Kasatha, slap him on the shoulder, and there's this moment of, hmm. And then he grabs him again. <laughs> he gets to make two check grapple checks around, so he's gonna make his first grapple check to grapple. 50 to beat your d- <laughs> Yeah, that does. Um, yeah. And because of his ability, I needed to do this the first time, but I did not. He actually does get to damage you when he grabs you. So that's going to be a sword smash, which does 15 damage. And for his second one, he's going to make you prone by sl by compressing you to himself with his six arms. Against, uh, against... Your CMD. Uh, maneuver. Yeah, okay, so that... It's That's all from Zora. Liancha, giant gorilla's dead. It becomes a free melee once again. Okay, so... You guys also, I don't remember if I said it, but you do know that four people will advance from this. Uh, which, uh, one of the, uh, which one of these two have been uh, exhausted already? I think it's the 10th finger. Am I correct? That is correct. That was me, mate. 
Okay, yeah. okay, I'm I am uh, going to be nice, <laughs> nice to you and going to ge show you zon 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 of love. So I need oh. you to make another fortitude save. Versus what I dare to ask. Oh, I am doing bone bone chatter hit bone chatter on him 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 again. You're so nice. <laughs> Yes, I'm being nice. I, I I am not not using dominate person. So I so this is being nice. Oh, that's and a natural problem. one. Oh man, okay. if this was a home game. Okay. Uh, I'm probably dead. So so you take 37 damage plus half of 37 again. So that would be about 50 damage. Is he dead? Maybe dead? not, because I'm going to use troll blood to stabilize. Okay, so <laughs> as you begin to was stabilized your wounds they would be pretty vicious as a bloody valkyrie sort of like like the uh uh viking uh, style uh flies above you and rips your bones out yep, yep. turn turn and turn it over i'm doing my job as a priest is a zonkus on all righty gevlin your tremor sense picks up a very loud thud oh good um how much longer okay, is the so, sandstorm in effect for? Uh, one more round after this. Okay. It lasts my constitution modifier in round, so six. Gotcha. And I can throw another one up. Um, I don't have anything specific I want to do right now, so you're just going to hear a loud sound. There's going to be more sound there, and I'm going to full round action gather power. Okay. Uh, so that way, next round, I will be reducing the burn by three. Seems good. Seems good. Alrighty. Yeah. Sean, it's real bad for you. Things are exploding. So, are you dying at the moment? Uh, I'm at negative something hit points, but I'm still. But you're stable? Okay, well, since you found a way to stabilize yourself, you're not out. You're just essentially unconscious. The big boy is gone. Parseth, what you got for us? Let's see here. I'm going to do. You know what? I'm going to be really nice to the man who just got downed. I'm going to do channel energy. I'm going to make sure that the Sverneblin does not get any of the healing from this. The Sverneblin uh, so is like. underground, so the Sverneblin doesn't have line of effect to it. It's almost like the War Priest of Gorum wants a good fight. Oh. So I heal up 16, and the man on the ground <laughs> also does. And does you're on the ground. Does my go away when I die and come back, or am I still exhausted? Um, I don't think so. Yeah, I believe it's removed. All right, and I'm going to make a move. Fair enough. That does run through Zort's threat range. But is, he's grappling, isn't he? He is, so he takes a nig two on the attack roll. He has the no. grappling vision. Not with this particular <laughs> build, I don't. No, because he's a truck, so yeah, he's grappling with his, his creepy middle arms. He has, like, six arms growing out of his, like, from chest to stomach, and that's what's holding on to Hankoon. All right, so I will swing. I have combat reflexes, so I can swing up to four times okay so raging dawn bong crit miss 34 to hit that will hit for 12 damage all right and then the last one 28 to hit that is a miss okay all right all righty now that that's over with hankoon grappled once again the arms of the trucks extending from his torso wrapped around you. Grappled, grappled and prone. And prone, yeah, as he bear hugs you. I may be incorrect, somebody in the comments when this goes up might rage against me, but I am going to rule that you can use a firearm while prone. I'm going to assume that the can't use ranged weapon except for a crossbow is language from the core rulebook that didn't ever think a gunslinger would exist. Okay, so especially because you're using pistols. Yeah. Okay, so scratch that. Can reload for him, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's the only kind of thing I would think would keep him from it. So yeah. So I'll just load my main hand and uh, shoot him in the head. We're targeting like before, so if I hit, he's confused for one round. Well, that sounds fun. We'll have to dig uh, out the confused table. Hello. Hi. So, so you're taking a minus four to hit. Minus four plus the oh. grapple minus. So that would be minus. Oh wait, uh, how much is well. the prone? 
Prone is a minus but, wait, four. Uh, prone is a minus four. Okay, so it's a minus eight. is a minus two. So it's a total. Yeah, but yeah. It, I also get a minus four to my dex. So it's, uh, yeah. my, so it's uh, minus eight in total. So he's got a 29 over your touch. Yeah. 29 touch. That hits. So that's 22 damage, uh, plus you're confused for a ramp. All right, so Zort, I'm going to let you roll your d100 as you let Aiden roll his d6 for the shadow and take six strength damage so long ago. I shall let you roll your d100 to see what goes down here. 42. 42. So on Zort's turn, he does nothing but continue to speak in Terran because it says babble incoherently, but to everybody else, that's what he's already doing. Honkern does escape the grapple. Vilyansha, what do you got? I am not uh, not, not liking the gunslinger get back on his feet, so I'm going to give him additional uh, additional, additional love. So, don't <laughs> make him work his days. Technically, you haven't done anything. Well, I'm making sure you oh, are dead, dead. <laughs> Make that for to oh. help. Okay, oh. you're going to take full uh, full full damage here, and you're exhausted if if you are not not dead dead by I'm death. just I'm gonna be just dead. Okay, forty sweet. Ow. Fair enough. Okay. All right, so then you guys are again glorious battle. Getting around spell resistance, getting around will saves. You guys are paralyzed as the Charikal lower themselves in. The shaman approaches Sean's body. And much, much faster than reincarnate should work. The shaman puts his hand down, and from the sand emerges a Charaka esque version of Sean who proceeds to take Sean's, all of his gear, all of his clothes, awkwardly dresses himself in that weird hat, takes the pistol, pistol whips Sean's old body, picks up the body, takes a bite out of the neck. The crowd goes wild as. They are brought back up into the arena. Josh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your patronage. Thank you for hanging out. Now, it passes on okay, to... Okay, I, I am going to fly over here to try to make as much room as possible between me and the gunslingers. Fair enough. Yeah, you did have a move action. Yep, turn turn it over. Uh, goes to Quiblin. Uh, this is the final round of the Sandstorm. Okay. Uh, I can't actually see who's been doing what, but I can feel the biggest set of feet, and that seems like a very valid reason to go after someone. Fair enough. This sandstorm that exists now is going to cease to exist, because I'm making a new one. How do I get rid of these in a nice quick way, or do I have to end it? Okay, thank you. Ooh, I'm trying to delete these and not delete characters. Okay, actually, so, okay, I can't see, uh, I'm bad with names, I can't Arcalas. see them. Arcalas is just out of your tremor sense. This is a dead body. Yeah. yeah, and you're flying, so you're grand. So, this will be an empowered sandstorm wall, and I've got to make sure it hits the only two people I can see. So, one, two, three, four, five... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven. Like it, it's connected in some way. Uh, something like that. Fair enough. Uh, so when it pops up first, they will instantly take damage, but it's way less than the actual normal damage. Already. It's 56 times three quarters, because it's oh, times oh, one and yeah, a half divided yeah, by two. Fair enough, okay. Understood. I have the option of using my move action this turn. I am still underground. Understood. Can you hold your breath? Or is it uh, yes, breath? I am constantly in an air bubble. Okay. Cool. Kineticists get a lot of really cool stuff. I need to, like, before I get done with first edition, which is to say probably never, I need to play a kineticist. They look like uh, fun uh, on a bun. For first stand uh, playing one, they're fun uh, class. So far, the best defense it is being up in the air or being underground. Yeah, for sure. Anywho, Arkelas, what you got? All right, I'm gonna try and do. I'm just gonna try and move. Zort can't take any actions right now, anyway. So 
He's on he's so All six of his arms go up to his weird mandibles and go. All right, so I'm gonna moving in straight lines. Okay. I am underground. Here, then there. Oh. Yeah. And that is my move action. Then I'm going to expend one more use of my fervor to heal. Alrighty. And that's gonna be pretty much my turn. All right, Hankoon. Sandstorm. So do I, do I need to have some, do I need to do some kind of save against the storm? I think it just says damage. Is that right, Quiblin? At, at the end of your turn, it'll do damage. So, or if you pass through it. Uh, if I exit it without passing through it. Let me. You should be fine. I imagine it's not on like entangle. Yeah. Just don't end your turn there. But I could be wrong. So if I. If I move here, I should be fine from the sandstorm, mm -hmm. but I'd get an right. uh, uh, attack of opportunity from... Okay. Right? That is correct. It's the start of your turn, yeah. So there's the fail for the first one. And it's not my turn yet, so I think that's my last available AO boat until my turn rolls around, right? I believe, yeah. Proceed, Hankoon. Uh, wait, uh, is that... How much did he roll? A natural one. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'm gonna shoot him once with my main hand. So then the question becomes, so, does a 24 confirm on your touch plus four? Uh, no, because that brings me pretty much back up. Okay, fair enough. So then it's only 24 damage, not 102. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whew! A hundred and two damage. That still wouldn't have taken me out, but that would have been. Would it really not? not have been? Jesus. Not while I'm raging. The gunslingers in this pot are doing so much better than the gunslinger in the other pot. Anywho. So 20, 24, 24 piercing and bludgeoning, yeah. Well, that's it. Alrighty, Zort. He's gonna take that. Uh, no, I'm not gonna take that. No, I know where he is. I'm gonna take it. You know where he is? I'm on his... oh, I didn't mean to grab you. I got, tr I got trimmer since. So yeah, I was making sure he's still at 30 feet. He is. So I'm going to move up here, and he will grapple again. Uh, he's going to have to take damage from leaving the sandstorm, so we may as well get that roll. And I see the 58. I believe that's what it's oh, for. Oh, it's uh, just it static. 43. 43? 43. Okay. 43 more damage. All right. That's a very, uh, very powerful kinetic thingy. I hate to play kineticist more. Jesus. So that's 44 doing 40 to do that grapple. It will do 14 damage. Yeah, I'm Funny. down to negative 11. Oh. Okay. So he gives you a hug. And he sees that you are... He goes... Hug! And he goes... And he hears cracking, and he kind of drops you. He kind of drops you, and you guys do again see that everyone is paralyzed. The charcoal descend. A four-armed monkey, kind of like about the size of a baboon. These guys are all pretty small. Emerges, and his. Well, I said four arms because there's a gorilla in the book that has four arms. He becomes a little gorillian. Uh, That's fair. Oh, but how about multiple tails to replace my head tentacles? You would have, like, yeah, the tail is certainly oh. extra long, like, around, over his head, almost like scorpion-esque. As it, like, begins picking up the guns, he descends on the Kasatha, rips his body apart, and begins just devouring the flesh as the crowd goes wild and the sandstorm is dispelled. Unfortunately, this one is going to be a little shorter than last week because we did have a last-minute, out-of-nowhere drop. So I, I didn't want to play two monsters, I just played one big fat one. So we do have our winners. Good. Hankoon, thank you so much for coming out and playing. Where are you broadcasting from, by the way? What? Where are you broadcasting from? Where do you live? Uh, I'm Italian. You're Italian? That's probably my favorite thing about being a YouTuber is, like, I don't get to meet people outside of small town Missouri very often, and, like, now I game with a Swedish dude on a weekly and a bunch of Canadians and now an Italian dude. That's super cool. Thank you so much for coming out. And it is Parsef. And it is...
Quiblin, and it is Zort. You've done it, Adam. You get to fight Kane. You get to fight Cashew. And oh. Ilvancha, who progress to the next bit yes. of stuff. You've done it. And for the record, I would like to see all of these guys come out and for like one shots and mini campaigns and stuff. I guess I'll have to message Josh that because he dropped out of the call. Regardless, oh, we're going to call it here. Thank you guys so much for coming out, hanging out, rolling dice. As always, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. If you don't go like IOPC, we can't be friends. We'll see you next time. Say bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Donald, you have Peace to go out. last. You know the rules. Bye. There, there it is. Love and harmony.